Welcome back to Muskrat Gold. Um, a friend of mine's got a cabin. It's been in the family for years. It's back in the middle of nowhere. There's no hope probably of ever having electricity to it. And it's always been powered by propane. Well, he's got new plans for it. He's gonna turn it into a complete off-grid cabin and he's got a lot of work done to it so far. And we're gonna take a look at it now. So why don't you come with me? Let's go for a walk. All right, welcome back to Muskrat Gulch. I'm here with my buddy Mike. He's building an off-grid cabin, and uh, he's going to tell us about it here. So what do you got going here, Mike? Trying to go silent, as we call it. Uh, I'm trying to build a cabin that I don't have to hear the generator running. So what I've done here... What's that noise I'm hearing right now? That's the inverter running. Uh, that's the only loud part. Uh, still got to work on that part, but uh, the inverter is the loud part now keeping itself cool while it inverts uh, uh, DC energy into AC energy. Okay, so where are you and what are, you, what are your plans? My plans, and I'm already halfway through, is one, I've got eight amorphous type solar panels on the roof here. Since we're, where we're at here in the undisclosed location, is there's great big hemlock trees that don't give direct sunlight. So crystalline and model crystalline type panels that you see most times only work usually in direct sunlight with sunny days, where amorphous type uh, solar panels don't use uh, silicon. They use glass with it painted on. Uh, open up to more light as far as the infrared and the ultraviolet. But it also worked on cloudy days and also with the trees being the way they are, don't need direct sunlight. So, it'll so, charge. so with all these trees, you're still going to get a charge? Still going to get a charge. They're sort of like the tortoise and hare, crystalline type that you see most like Nova Scotia power install on your roof. They're sort of designed for high voltage, high wattage when the sun's out. But if it's cloudy or in the, in the late at night or early in the morning, they won't do any much, much charging. But through the day they will. We're amorphous as soon as the sun comes up till the sun goes down, it's slow and steady. So like I call it, I usually call it the tortoise and the hare. I have more of the tortoise where slow and steady charge all through the day where you would have on the type of crystalline style, more the blue style as you would see, is more or less designed for the hare where if the sun's out good, it's going to charge faster. So how much power can you get from these? What right, can you do with it? Right now I'm getting about uh, 180 watts out of what I have now with four panels with the plans on adding five more here shortly uh, to increase it to about 250 watts of energy at about uh, two amps a piece is what it is. Now, I don't know the actual math in my head, but uh, the idea is, is to charge, charge the seven uh, batteries I have right now for battery bank. And what's your battery bank? I see behind us here. You've got seven here now. Seven gel cell type batteries, deep cycles, that are being charged uh, by the charge controller that's inside the camp coming from those solar panels so that they don't overcharge and also regulate it so uh, the, the solar panels won't uh, kill my batteries. Are you going to add more batteries to it? Yes, once I get some more batteries, my plan is to have upwards of nine batteries. As you can see down there, there's two, a spot down there, but I only have seven at the moment which a total, uh, they're 105 amp hours uh, to do the math. If those batteries are 100% uh, running and they're fully charged with the type of inverter and about the 450 watts that I draw with everything inside this camp, uh, the maths, math tells me I get about two and a half days without any actual power going into the batteries. So you can you can run everything you got, not everything. You've got an air conditioner here. Air conditioner, I wouldn't want to run that off. It but everything would, else, your fridge and- My fridge, uh, my fridge, my lights, my TV that I have here. Uh, Mike's got a hot water and demand system so you can get hot water without a hot water tank. Yeah, so it turns on, so I, basically with a little pump going through, so uh, you just turn on the pump and turn the taps on and away it goes. So you can run everything there for two and a half days with these batteries if they're fully charged? If they're fully charged, by math. Realistically, more like a day, day and a half at most probably, under normal circumstance. Can you show us how you turn these into electricity? Yes, I can. All right, let's do that. So inside here is, I like to call it silent mode, even though you can, once I open them, you can hear the fan. Inside here is basically the energy coming from the batteries, coming through these cables here, as you see, coming up down here, your positive and negative, coming into a eliminator 1,000 watt uh, power inverter, which is also a pure sign uh, wave inverter. 
I also have a modified sine wave inverter uh, if you ever ever do this. If you're not running TVs and running pumps uh, or medical equipment is more or less what it's for, but anything that's electronic, don't go with the modified sign one. It'll make the lights flicker, it'll make the TV sort of flicker, because uh, instead of making a pure sign, it's sort of doing it in a block. Hard on Explain what sign means. Sign is your AC, up and down, up okay. and down, like an AC current, it's at uh, 60 hertz, right, in your normal house. Well, this is what this is doing, is, is converting it, where modified ones are cheaper, but they're not a true sign, gotcha. as in nice and round. This is an actual pure sine wave inverter. So it's good for electronics, good for medical equipment. In my case, uh, I'm running a little pump for the water, as we said earlier, hard on pumps, hard on electronics. So I did have one, I tried it, but I didn't like it. It was flickering everything, and it's hard on that stuff. So I decided to go with a pure sine wave inverter, which is clean. It's exactly the same kind of power coming out of your uh, wall socket down at your house. So the idea is, is here, I haven't quite finished, this is still a work in progress, but I also have a generator outside with this here, so when I'm not running the generator, even though it's off, I always make sure I have this off so the outside power is cut off. So just in case, I do not want, as you see here, there's a plug coming out of it going into this plug, which is back feeding into the panel. As well, that's the, what I was going to say, that when yeah. we got here, that wasn't plugged in. That wasn't plugged in. I do want to put another switch here, so this is basically on solar power energy. This will be off when it's running on gas, we'll call it, a generator. Just to make sure that in no one time, neither one of these are on. One or Both the other. They can be off, but not on, one or the other. Right now, I haven't got one of these yet, so all I've done here is made it so there's a plug that goes into this, coming out of this. As you can see, this red wire goes into the feed, so there's two feeds. I'm not sure what would happen. I haven't tried it, and I'm not planning to. <laughs> to have both feeds coming in, I would think that they would probably, this would probably, the generator probably wouldn't like it kick off, and I would imagine it would probably cook this after a few minutes, I would think. I'm not going to So we're not going to try we're it. We're not going to try it. I have no intentions of trying it. I know it's bad. I don't want to find out for uh, what something like this is worth, a pure sign, more expensive than an inverter one, or a, a modified sign. I wouldn't suggest it either. But this is how it feeds in here to here. And the fan you hear is keeping it cool. Um, so that plug that you've got there, that one, that's power coming in, not... That's power coming out of the inverter, going up around into the red and into the panel to supply power in this house right here, or this cabin right now. As you can see, the lights right. on, the TV's on, uh, air conditioner I have off. It draws a little more than what I would like to. The more wattage it starts to draw, the faster the current comes out of the batteries. So. Uh, can I run the AC? Yes, I can. Can I run the pump for the water? Yes, I can, being a pure sign. But it'll reduce that two and a half days I was telling you right. down more and more. Right now, and I can't see it if you were to look, if I could see up here, right now I am running, once it switches, uh, 240 watts. So about one third of what this thing can produce. Uh, Again, you'd have to do the math yourself if you know how, how to figure out uh, the different types, of, how to find an amperage in that. But the idea is that two, the, the main thing is if you wanted to find out how much current you're drawing, uh, total it's 12, it would take 240 divided by, I believe, uh, uh, 12 as your voltage would give you your amperage is what it's drawing. So it's putting out for, uh, 240 watts divided by 12 to tell you how many amps, which is probably right off the top of my head about 15, 15 amps. The more amps you draw, the faster your battery is uh, drain. Incredible. Okay. And this is just off the top of my head. I didn't look this up before we did this video, <laughs> so if I got that wrong, please don't, don't comment, comment too bad on Rick's. Rick's there you uh, go. On, on so thing. your goal here is 100% self-sufficiency in this building. Yes. I'll still use a generator from time to time, but the idea is, is so when uh, I have friends up here and we're outside or inside, I don't have a generator running or an inverter generator running. As quiet as it is, I want it so when we're outside, it's quiet so I can enjoy the sound of trees right here, which is the here. point i said if i come up here and, and hear generators running I might as well go down to the house right the whole point is to quiet so i can sit out there drink my tea and not hear anything why don't you show us your water system water your system. hot water well this is a work in progress as well but this is what we consider off-grid washing your dishes uh what i what you see here is the water tank which is uh, something uh, I had acquired. The, the next, the big one is actually going to be out of an actual RV water tank, which will be up high to give it some gravity. But this here, I fill up with water, still bringing it up. 
which goes down into here, into this hose, which goes into a little, or a little 110 uh, transfer pump, which goes into a filter over there, which goes over to this little black thing here. What that does there, that's like a miniature pressure tank. That way there, it always keeps a certain pressure on the other side of the line. You need it mostly for when you come up here uh, to, the, to the six liter propane on demand. That way there, because it, 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 it needs a certain amount of pressure for it to engage. So this system here, being dormant, we've got propane, and we've got electric running. So if you were to use it, if you come over here, you can't really see it, but I flick a switch on here that goes to the pump, which turns the pump on. It starts to push water down through. So as you can see down here, there's cold water. How long does it take to get hot? If I turn it on now, if you look closely here, you can see the temperature coming up. Within probably 10 seconds, it starts to get warm. And as it goes up in temperature... Yeah, it's already getting warm, yeah. It will start to get up. It gets to about 40 degrees on the thing there. And it will get hot enough to scald you if you're not careful. You can set that for the temperature set, you want? I can set it to... I don't know, it shouldn't run the pump without water actually running through. That's what keeps it cool. So don't let it run uh, just for the sake of running. This is what's uh, this is the actual water regulator. So if you have low pressure, high pressure, uh, in this case it's set it quite low, so that there will be, let the amount of water go through. Uh, if it's if for two reasons, one, not enough pressure coming in, set it lower so it'll turn on quicker. But also, uh, if you find that the water's not getting hot enough, that means the water's going through too fast. Uh, over here is the actual gas regulator. If you want it to go hotter, you want it to go colder, that's what that's for. It's the more gas, obviously, the hotter it will get. I don't want it scalding. I just want to be able to wash dishes, wash right. my hand, so I don't want it scalding hot. All this up here is, is a summer winter mode. Summer's an off, winter's on. When I switch it over to winter in this mode here, it will turn on every few hours in the wintertime to keep it so it don't freeze. So it doesn't freeze. That way there you don't have to drain it. I'm still planning on draining it when I'm not here in the winter time, but the idea is it kicks on for 30 seconds a minute, keeps it warm, turns off. So your goal is to have the bigger tank up high so that it... Yes, the bigger it, tank will probably be up head. here. So you do need a little bit of gravity. To, that's why this is up here and not underneath. This requires a little bit of gravity to get it working. This type of pump is designed as, you, as people might have used in their uh, houses. If you are on the third floor and you turn your uh, shower on, water will sort of pulse and right. really low and really high. This type of pump is designed to put onto that third floor in your house. That way it'll boost the pressure back up. So it's not really a transfer pump. It's a pony pump, I think is what it's called. But it still needs a little bit of gravity above the pump just to get it started. If I have that down low, it won't be able to pull it. It's designed to already have pressure behind it. So as long as I have a little bit of gravity pressure, that's all it needs to grab that water and push it up through underneath, up to this, and up to here. Right. So, what's your next plan? What, what's the next thing you're going to be doing here? Are you still working on your... I'm still working on the solar. I've got five more solar panels put up. I have eight total up there now. My plan is to put five more up top there to increase the water. What do you pressure. want at the end? How many do you want? I have many as I can get my hands on. But uh, I can only, with my current setup, I can only do 30 amps at 450 watts with my current controller. Uh, that would mean I could use up to probably a total of... Uh, well, about 20, 24 types of panels I have up there. They're about 25 watts a piece. So I'll do the math times two, or 450 divided by 25. And the amperage are quite low. They're only, like I said, one and a half, two amps. So each one, as long as they don't. Uh, if, if I get too many, I can actually wire it from parallel to series. As you know, if you put it in parallel, your voltage doesn't change. That's where it stays at 12 volt. But uh, the amperage will increase. So if you put two, uh, two together, It'll still be 12 volt in parallel, but your uh, amperage will go to four. Put three, it'll go to six amps. If you do it in series, your amperage stays the same. So it'll be two amps, two amps, two amps, two amps, no matter what. But your voltage will go to 24 volts. Put a third one in 36 volts. Put a four one in 48 volts. As you hear people talk about 24 volt systems and 48 volt systems, my system's designed for 12 volts. 
The bigger solar panel systems you see, Nova Scotia Power, they can run up to 48 volts. So everything that you put in, in this cabin is going to be 12 volt? 12 volt system because of my way that I've got my batteries wired. And yet you have an air conditioner. The air conditioner, most is as in the fridge, in the air conditioner, in that pump is what's the difference between running watts and uh, starting watts. Starting watts, as you've seen on generators, I got a 25. As I, sorry, as I have, I have a 2,000 watt generator. Well, yes, only for a few minutes. So when you turn the air conditioner on, you turn your fridge on. You ever see your lights dim down? Sure. That's your starting watts. Getting the motor working, getting the uh, pump running. Once it's running, the wattage comes down. Same thing with either whether I use the inverter or whether I use a generator. Uh, once the air conditioner is running, it's drawing very little wattage same as the fridge. The fridge pump comes on, but otherwise it's only drawing very, but one third, I believe, uh, don't quote me on that, one third of it's actually. So you can run it at 12 volts? I can run everything in here right now with our inverter, no problem with the amount of wattage. I run it full power. If everything was running, my math, or from what I've seen, it runs about 600 watts. So I will, my inverter is 1,000 watts, 2,000 watt uh, 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 starting watts. But I've never went over a thousand watts, even by starting everything up. So I'm not worried. I wanted to keep everything well below. I was hope my, my plan was no more than 650 watts of energy being pulled out of the inverter. Otherwise, I need to double up my batteries, right. double up solar panels, and this little cabin is not that big. Okay. So uh, for heat, you've got the the wood stove here. Wood stove, yes. The um, wood stove. Uh, and believe me, it'll cook you out of here. So after after you get your um, your solar done. I guess it'll never really be done because you'll always get more always solar panels. Work my own upgrade the solar right. panels as time goes on. But once you get that to where you're happy with it, what's the next thing for this cabin? The next thing for this cabin is even though I have a water tank and this tank here, uh, I still got to bring water up. My next plan is to actually build a, uh, I've got a, uh, a water, uh, Rain catchment bed. system? My catchment system is what I'm working on next. Uh, outside, I bought uh, from the good people, uh, they were doing it at Dalhousie. They were doing a uh, fundraiser making rain barrels, so I supported them. Uh, delivered a uh, beautiful rain barrel with all the attachments and that. So, my idea is, is to put the rain barrel outside on the corner. Uh, I've got steel roof on this cabin, so the water will run off quite well, keeping it clean. Is to put gutters on one side when it rains, goes into the barrel. The barrel will be outside. I also have another 12 volt transfer pump, similar to what you see under there. The idea will be is it'll be a 12, it just happens to be a 12 volt one. I'll have it so I can pump water out of there uh, and pump it into the tank that I'm going to install up here, hang it from the ceiling, again for the gravity. So the water will be always sort of going, that'll be sort of my well, and this will be my uh, holding tank for water. Is my next. What about drinking water? Drinking water, I'm still bringing up in bottles. You're never going to drill a well up here? You're not going to? I was planning on drilling. I was planning on getting what's called a uh, uh, well spike. Uh, I had not, not, that's not this year. Finding ones with COVID going on is almost impossible right now. But up here where we're at is all rock. You're on a bit of a hill here as well. You know, there's lots of water up here, but I, you'd have to pound down probably at least 20 to 40 feet to get some decent water as far as reserve, as far as... Uh, you, you don't want to get water off the top of the... No. Floor. You don't want two feet down. That's why crocs even go down. You usually want them down a good 10, 20 feet. My know. last dose, I had them down 22 20, feet, I think. The farther down, the cleaner the water gets. Right. Uh, I don't think I could actually pound down 24 That'd feet. That'd be a lot of work. It's all rock. Even though it's as beautiful as it is up here, you scuff off the uh, moss and the thing. About two inches down is just pure rock. You definitely hit a rock. So I sort of maybe someday down the road I might put an actual pounded well up here as far as the well spike, but not behind my priorities where I think I'd rather use the water off here and just bring up some bottled water anyway. You can drink water, rain water. I plan on putting a, a filter. You can put a filter system. Put a filter, but you still have to boil the water, which is right. not impossible. I've got the stove here. I can put it in there. But I think probably just to be safe this, with up here, I'll just be bringing, that's what the refrigerator's for, is right. to bring up bottled water. Let's take a look around outside. You uh, you just said it's a beautiful place up here, so let's see what it looks like outside. Sure. Look in progress. They always are. But as you can see, why this spot was chosen was for the, uh, the big hemlocks that I have up here. So it's wide open. And it is nice of, up here, isn't it? A lot of shade. 
But as you can see, we're still around 6, 6.30 at night and it's not dark, but you can see there's no direct sunlight really coming in. And only for a couple hours a day, direct sunlight would come to the roof here with solar panels. And, and even without direct sunlight all the time, you can still get power for the... With these type of solar panels, are they amorphous? Yes. I can still uh, generate enough energy to uh, pretty much go right until sundown. So let's see his solar panels. There's his solar panels up there. And you've got what, two, four, six, eight, eight of them? I have eight of them right now. And, and I have five more too that I purchased the other night that are going to go on beside them. Uh, do they have to, when you add to it, do they all have to be the same brand? They should be. Not so much brand, but the same style, type. same type. Uh, you shouldn't mix and match. People will argue with me, but yes, you should stick with uh, either go with crystalline or amorphous. As you can see sitting over there is a little 40 watt crystalline one that I use for testing up here to see which one would work better and the amorphous ones work better. Those That is still charging as we speak, but nothing compared to what the amorphous ones are doing. The problem with amorphous is I need for every, say, I don't know what the actual math is, but for a crystalline, uh, that size of one would be the same as what one of those can produce in that twice the size. That's the only right. problem with amorphous is you need double the size, roughly, to create the same amount of energy. But as technology is getting better and better, crystalline or monocrystalline, depends on which type you go with, is getting better and better. So and they'll come down in price. Come down in price and be more efficient. Again, people argue with me. This is just the research of what I've, my personal opinion, and what I've done research and what I've tested up here. Some people will argue with, uh, maybe disagree. Uh, all I can say is do your own research, make your own decisions. Uh, maybe someday I'll put crystal lines up there, but for now I'm sticking mostly with any more of these style ones. Okay, the cabin's been here a while. Yes, 25 plus years. How long have you been working on this? This year, since about February. Are you happy with your progress? So far, so good. Where do you expect to be at the end of summer? In the summer, I plan to have all metal uh, siding on this, uh, have the solar system completely finished, the water system installed completely, and finish inside as far as a uh, little bit more of actual inside work, but that's wintertime project on inside work. Uh, I've got to build a couple of uh, places to put wood for the, get the wood done and places to put the wood. But after that, uh, it's time to sit down around the fire pit once I find one and enjoy the summer. And I'll be up here for that. That's about it. So that's what Mike said so far. We'll go back again later in the summer and see what he's got going. Uh, he's got quite a little system there. And uh, I think he's really had something to look forward to. So join us again next time. Don't forget, uh, muskrat gulch every Thursday. Women that hunt every second Tuesday. Um, we'll see you next time. Thank you very much.